Hello to everyone watching this footage. It's Leviathan again, and I have some more updates to my Leviathan universe, even though it's a little hard for the setup to be, so I apologize for the angling and the hesitation, and of course the eye contact, and I also apologize if I look like Martin from uh, Vivarium, which if you don't know that movie, I recommend you look it up because it's creative and such. So, the previous installment, I have made the I have revealed the five main heroes. Now I have the five notable villains affiliated with the heroes. And I'm sorry about the illustrations because only one of those five villains have illustrations about. So I apologize if you guys would end up having a hard time picturing the other first four. I'll be trying all that I can to describe them to you so that way you can get some idea of what they're all about. No hard feelings. And, uh... Okay, here are some stuff. Um, Tyranitar is a notable enemy of Madame Shear, which, if you remember, the creator of Blader Tech Industries with the bladed fingers and such. Her real name is Dr. Jessica Parks. She's 30 feet tall and weighs 8.5 tons, so close to the size of a T-Rex. She is a villain and a notable queen of the dinosaurs. Her official base is... Uh, an island found in the Atlant Atlantic Ocean called Ancient Island, which has prehistoric organisms and a few miscellaneous. And, of course, she's able to uh, travel to different locations whenever she feels like it. She has four and a half brains and intelligence, which means that she's very intelligent, like scientific-level intelligence, since a walnut's like, yay big. This is how big a walnut truly is. You know? So, she loves rampaging across cities, only cares about boys if they're not vegetarians, easily offended for her inhuman appearance. She's extremely lethal when angered about her own genetics. She hates rejection from others, and she suffers from a bad case of halitosis. She has great size and strength, sharp claws and teeth, high intellect, regenerative abilities, acute senses, the ability to mentally control all reptilian organisms, and has a strict diet for human and animal flesh and bone. She has bright green colored eyes and strawberry blonde hair and varied, like, lengths and styles, you know? She used to be an everyday reptile specialist that had always admired cold-blooded animals. Like, even when she's a baby, she loves checking out the alligators and such. And uh, she used to be childhood friends with Madame Shear, but eventually she had an experiment during a flash lightning storm, and she and Madame Shear tried to invent a serum that could grant the reptilian ability to regenerate from any wound. But a lightning strike shattered the serum, and, was, and the serum splashed all over Jessica, which eventually um, she ended up becoming waste up the body of a humanoid, and waste down the legs and tail of a T-Rex, like, permanently. And she blamed Madame Shear for it, because, even though she didn't necessarily cause it to happen, it just occurred. But she refuses to admit to that. She's determined to bring all the dinosaurs back and mark all of humanity to extinction, but more likely to have her against revenge against Madame Shear, who she blames, second mention. She sometimes wears an alligator-scaled skippy top, you know, like a top, you know. Otherwise, she simply wears nothing official, which means that she doesn't have a particular fashion sense, because she normally wears, like, casual clothes and such. She is solitary. Sometimes she goes solo. She's the founder and leader of an enemy of Madame Shear called the Scantly Six, and I apologize if that seems like an odd name for the team, but this was... Tyranitar is like the second anything I've made in my Leviathan universe, and I have no choice but to just go with it by this point, you know? I just don't want it to be a waste. Or she could team up with other villains. She's clearly inspired from the T-Rex. So try to imagine a, a threat for Madame Shear in that fashion. The next character is a notable enemy for... Dentrony known as Mars. She goes by Marizza, M-A-R-I-Z-A. She's six foot three inches tall, weighing 204 pounds. She's a villain and the ruler of the planet Mars. 
which is where she has her official base on. She has five brains and intelligence, so slightly smarter than Tyranitar, but still intensely smart, you know? She is driven to turn Earth into another of her planet, because the Martians have a bit of an overpopulation problem, and they figure that if they hijacked Earth and turned it into being more like Mars, then they would have a better chance of surviving despite the overpopulation. She has a complete lack of compassion. And she, her, like a Martianoid anatomy and such, due to her being like a, Mar like a Martian like warrior that's also manufactured, she hates it when she gets rust in her parts. Well, because of, like, the gears and the joints and such, you know? She has a three-clawed, bionic right arm that could project a nuclear blast from its palm. Her right hand is like this. You know? She has supreme intellect, skill at martial arts, an expert battle strategist, and can repair her systems with ease. She has red eyes and orange-colored hair of no style in particular. She is a prototype Martianoid that has been invented to destroy anyone that makes any attempt to stop her, created by the Martians to be like a ruler, you know? You know? One time she learned the planet was having an overpopulation problem. She goes to Earth to make it useful for the Martian society to expand. While there, she had killed Dr. Betty Trevers, which, if you don't know, is the adopted mother of Dentrini. Remember, Dentrini was adopted. Betty Trevers is the name of her adopted mother, which I apologize for not entirely memorizing in the previous footage, and later fought against Dentrini and her allies of the paranormal defense when they tried to ruin her plan. She got knocked down to an island called Mythos, which is populated with creatures that you could find in folklore and mythology. You know, creatures of mythology. She will do anything to kill Dentrini for foiling her plans to help the Martians deal with the overpopulation. Because, of course, due to Olympus Mons, which is a massive volcano, and the sandstorms that last for months straight, the Martians have become subterranean. Of course, Mars is way smaller than Earth, so it's more compacted. And they have to be careful whenever they expand their, their uh, subterranean civilization, because there's also a lot of aquifers. And if they rupture an aquifer, it's a morbid tragedy, because the Martians have an intolerance to water and germs. Mars has a cybernetic system that forms most of her body. That's her outfit, you know? It's like a body anatomy f feature thing. She can go solo, she commands her Martian servants, and she could also team up with other villains whenever she feels like it. She's obviously inspired from the Martians, which is common knowledge by this point. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully I've been doing all that I can to keep things proper with these descriptions. And if not, I apologize. The next character, which is an enemy of Pym, in fact, her most notable enemy is Dark Pym. Real name inapplicable, she is the same height and weight as Pym, 15 feet tall, weighing 500 pounds. She's an evil duplicate of Pym, a clone of Pym that was faulty. Her base is on the planet's moon, known as the Fortress of Terrorism. She has five brains and a plus, and a plus means that she's smarter than any human could be, due to being a clone of Pym, Penelope Ingrid Myers, you know? Um, she's menacing and murderous. She'll do anything to fully destroy all things that are nothing like her. If they're not like her, she would want them obliterated without any remains. She's extremely dangerous. She's one to be avoided at all costs. But, there's a fluke. Since she is a clone of Pym, like a faulty clone, if she kills if Pym dies, then Dark Pym would die with her because, in a sense, they're the same person. In a sense. She has all the capabilities as Pym. You know, when it comes to all the capabilities of her as a Lunarian, as mentioned in the previous footage. She has glowing red eyes, 
deep auburn hair that is luscious in style. Like, basically like the same kind of hair that Pym has, you know? And the reason why Pym created her is that hardly anyone can win an argument against her because she's so smart, so she decided to create a cloning device to uh, make a duplicate to argue with, but the cloning device had a bad side effect that created Dark Pym with all of her powers but a total lack in compassion. Eventually, Dark Pym decided to steal the main device and clone herself into an entire army to, in order to destroy mankind. You know, an army of evil Pyms. When Pym had attempted to stop her clone, she found that she's too far too powerful to destroy because the same power level as herself. You know? And she finally decided to launch Dark Pym and her army to the moon for eternity, hopefully, but she soon designed herself a new layer called the Fortress of Terrorism. She recently applied on more schemes to defeat Pym and all those that look nothing like her. Like, if you are nothing like Dark Pym, you would be you would be considered an alternate to her perspective. And she wants to obliterate all art alternates. You know, she wants only people who resemble her to stay active and nothing else. She's that sinister. She wears a purple latex spacesuit, you know, that is like a one-piece entire body suit with a bit of a turtleneck, I believe. She sometimes goes solo. She commands her clowns as their leader, and she could join with other villains. But, of course, very commonly she would go against those villains afterwards due to them most likely being an alternate as well. She's obviously inspired from Pym, which is common knowledge, you know what I'm saying? So those are three out of five of the, character, the villains. I have another one, which is extremely intense, a notable rival for Colossa in terms of power level. She's known as Cosmic. Her real name is Pamela Simons. Her height is 5 feet 11 inches, weighing 158 pounds. But her height and weight could be vast due to her powers. She is a villain and the master of the universal dimension. She's the one who made all the infinite realities of Leviathan universe. Her base is her dimensional layer, which is outside of the cosmos and even outside of Asgolympius, which is the home of the Alpha Gods. So basically, Earth then the Cosmos, and then Asgolympius, and then Cosmic's Lair, which is its own separate thing with all the alternate realities of, of the Leviathan universe. You know, um, Intelligence is five brains and three pluses, which makes her even more smarter than Dark Pym, because of the three pluses is an indication of how vastly smart she is in comparison. She's extremely genocidal, wants nothing more but to have all the power over everything in sight. And she's extremely persistent. Her weaknesses, she has some bad anger issues. She also suffers from a severe case of binge eating disorder. So she's basically a binge eater. You know? Eating so much. But in a positive aspect of the matter. She possesses vast cosmic powers, can alter realities can travel through time and space, can project massive holograms of her head to anywhere that she desires. It's been known to expand large enough to consume an entire planet. She could also break the fourth wall, being able to be aware of her audience. She has bluish green colored eyes and she wears a pair of glasses hair, tannish brown, very short and uh, a bit sleek, you know. Pamela Simons was a wannabe US president but she lost the election for being extremely judgmental and rude, so she was kicked off the stand immediately due to being so stubborn, you know? She had then gotten so outraged that she headed to a company that rivals um, Blader Tech Industries called Zilla Tech Labs, which was founded and owned by a villain known as Gigantica which I believe I would explain more of Gigantica to you guys in later footages, I believe. 
and until then, sorry about the inconvenience for that character, for a way to receive all the power she needs. And Gigantica gave her a three and a half inch test tube filled with a purple substance that tasted and smelled gorgonic, like horrible. And after she drank it, she received power so great even rivals those of the Alpha Gods themselves, which is, of course, the, the main rulers of Leviathan Universe, at least by default. She eventually expanded herself to, and plotted to rule the, all the cosmos, but since she was betrayed, Gigantica started fighting, fighting Cosmic until she was sent through a portal of time and space and she ended up in a dimensional location, like a dimensional area, where she designed all the infinite realities of Leviathan Universe, including a reality where she devours the entire Earth along with countless others. You know? She created all the infinite realities, so infinite possibilities, infinite varieties of the characters and other aspects. She simply dresses in political clothing. She, she, she always has formal wear. Team Solitaire or with other villains, and inspiration, believe it or not, is Sarah Palin. No hard feelings. It just occurred to me as a form of inspiration. And this character, I actually have illustrations for an enemy of Kaijericus, Queen of the Mutants, Queen Hydra. This is the first illustration. Gives you a good idea. And there's also the second illustration of the exact same character, but just altered to a more efficient aspect of what she would look. Her real name is Kimitsu Gokanu. She's 866 feet tall and weighing 96,000 tons, so she's twice the size as Kaijericus. She is an end villain and the arguably the trademark enemy of Kaijericus. Her base is mobile, which means she travels a lot, nowhere in particular. She has four and a half brains in intelligence level, similar to Mars's intelligence level, you know? And, uh, she is merciless, destructive, and stubborn. She'll do anything to destroy both Kaijericus and all of mankind. She has no guilt for any of the cities that she destroys or any of the people that she kills. She's that devastating, you know? She's like a menace to society, like public enemy number one. You know what I'm saying? Her armpits are her potential weak spots. She also hates having her heads decapitated and the stumps getting burnt. Because like a Hydra, if she has one of her three heads cut off and then carcerated, then it wouldn't be able to regenerate properly, if at all. She has three heads, sharp claws and teeth, um, wings that allow flight, um, golden scales that serve as protection, a double-ended tail that she uses to stab her opponents. Her left head, so basically her left head, um, basically, uh, projects freezing breath. Her right head projects streams of acid, as you can see. And her center head projects intense flames. She also has great strength, strong regeneration in most places, and she could fly unaided in the depths of space. She has deep red colored eyes and formerly used to be green, and she has long golden cranial spikes as you saw from the illustrations. And this is how she came to be. Kamitsu Gokanu Used to be a genetics doctor who found that she recently received a viral case of brain cancer. So she decided to collect the sample of the DNA of Kaijericus, known as K-cells, to cure her problem. But Kaijericus came and destroyed her lab when she was trying to get some brain samples, well, DNA samples, and Kamitsu got submerged deep into a large tank of radiation, similar to the kind of radiation where Kaijericus became how she was, after three months, instead of just one month, she got transformed into a three-headed dragon creature. She uh, flew to Seattle, started attacking the city of Seattle, until Kaijericus arrived 
and had a bit of an issue of being able to fight her until she got some help from Goddess, the founder and leader of the Alpha Gods, who uh, gave her the capability of transforming into the maximum, like, a version of herself where all of her powers are in its maximum level, known as Maximum Kyjuricus. And after a rematch, she finally defeated Queen Kydra and sent her into the depths of space, where she healed herself and brought the character, the, the half-hero, half-villain character, an anti-hero, if you will, Calorie, back from her long orbiting from the planet Beta Carine, or Eta Carine, I believe, rocking her back to Earth, you know. I would explain Calorie in future footages as well, which I apologize, you know. Sorry, I have to plug my nose to keep from sneezing. I don't want that to be an issue. I'm sorry. And um, she recently planned for another attempt to destroy Kaijericus with some assistance from Cosmic. The, the previous installment, the previous description of the character, you know. She's mostly covered in golden scales. She's solitary, or she could team up with other villains. And she's inspired from the legendary kaiju King Ghidorah, which you probably have some sense of that even, like, just by the illustrations, but trust me, it's a thumbs up, no need for any issues when it comes to the matter. It's just her source of inspiration. Just give me a chance. So, sorry, um, those are all the Elish, these are all the, uh, descriptions I have of the five characters. I hope it's efficient for you guys of pinpointing these characters without any illustrations which I apologize for that issue. And I hope you guys are impressed with the five notable villains of those five main heroes, you know? They have some potency. Like the fact that Tyranitar wants to get revenge on Madame Shear because she blames her for her permanent transformation. And also uh, for Mars killing Denstranese's adopted mother which leads her to be in rivalry against Denstrini, who's trying to keep Mars, Mar, Marissa from turning Earth into being more like the Red Planet. So you guys get my point, you know? I hope you guys are impressed with these characters, and I hope that this footage is satisfactory for you guys in terms of all the detail and the descriptions and such. I've been doing all that I can to keep things in proper symmetry. And thank you in advance for understanding. And uh, as you can see here behind me are three notable illustrations that I would be able to do at some point in the future, which I apologize if it gets a bit prolonged. I'm just trying to give you guys a chance. I don't want to leave you hanging and I don't want to, uh, I don't want to be an issue for you guys because that would be bad for my reputation for this podcast system and such. And, and if you want, you could be able to subscribe, like, uh, you know, just whenever you feel like doing so. It's your choice. And, um, hope you guys enjoyed all the stuff you learned from this footage and all of this data that you guys have listened to me about trying my best to describe and such, and helping you picture. And, um, I like, and, uh, going to see you guys in the next installment that I will be able to do some point next week, approximately. And, uh, thank you all for standing by and just listening and trying your best to keep up, you know? I'm just, it's a fine congrats for you guys as well, and you're welcome in advance. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I just hope you guys would be checking out future installments, second or third dimension. Sorry about the stalling, and um, see you guys next time. Hope you enjoy your days and such, and transmission.